There's one thing that might be the most important thing, even more important than fats, when it comes down to following a low-carb, high-fat diet, but also when following a fasting protocol too, and that is salt. This literally, science is starting to show that when you are in a salt-deprived state, you eat anything and everything. You crave sugars, and there's some really interesting pathways that are causing this. The other wild thing is, a lot of us are getting a completely wild kind of salt in our bodies through our diet that is not solving the issue, and it's actually making it so we're not getting the results that we want, whether it be through a fasting lifestyle, or through a ketogenic, or simply low-carb or paleo lifestyle. The science is earth-shattering. But hey, you are tuned in to the internet's leading performance, nutrition, and fat loss channel. New videos every single Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday at 7 a.m. Pacific time, and a bunch of other videos throughout the week as well. Please hit that little bell button so you can turn on notifications so you know whenever I post a new video or go live. All right, so in order to make some sense of all of this, I'm gonna reference a couple of studies. But the first study is really interesting because it is actually a case study. Okay, so it's a case study talking about one individual and the reason that this is important is because it puts things into sort of a storyline context. And I wanna make sure you hear me out on this because if you are following a ketogenic low carb diet or you are fasting, I can almost guarantee that you are in a sodium deprived state. Okay, now this is jumping to conclusions a little bit, but what happens inside the body when you are doing a low carb diet or when you are fasting is quite simple. Your insulin levels are suppressed, okay? So when your insulin levels are suppressed, it triggers the kidneys to excrete extra sodium. So what that means is once you start a low carb diet or you start fasting, insulin levels go down and you lose a lot of sodium. Most people think this is a good thing because they think it means they're gonna lose water retention and bloat. Well, it's actually quite the opposite and all of this is gonna make sense if you watch the entire video. So let's look at this case study. This case study was published in JAMA and this case study took a look at a kid that had a condition where he could not synthesize aldosterone. What that means is his body consistently excreted sodium. He could never get enough sodium because his body ultimately couldn't process it. Now, it's an extreme example, but to a degree, that's kind of what's going on when you're on a low carb diet or you're fasting. You are not really utilizing salt the way that you could be. So what they found with this child was that he had this insatiable appetite, an insatiable craving for salt all the time, all the way to the extreme, to where he literally wanted to drink ocean water. Now this sounds like some weird story, but this is actually a published case study. The kid just wanted salt all the time. And what they found was that it was triggering processes within his brain that were causing him to seek salt by whatever means necessary. It was almost possessing him. So what they found based off of this study is that sodium depletion evokes a process in which the central nervous system in the body does whatever it possibly can to seek sodium. So it tells your brain to go do whatever it can. Go do what you can to satisfy this urge for salt. That's how critical salt is to our life, that our central nervous system and our brain actually have mechanisms that can override a lot of other things to ensure that we go out and we get salt. Now, when you look at the animal world, they have instincts that will tell them to go get salt. Now, let me give you a perfect example. Those of you that watch my videos and know a little bit more of my personal life know that we have horses, okay? If you have livestock or you have horses, you know that you give them salt licks, like these salt bricks. Now, what's interesting is when we give our horses salt bricks in the wintertime or when we're not using them as much, they hardly ever touch them. But the moment that it's hot out or the moment that we start working them more and they break up a sweat and they work into a lather a bit more, they're licking that thing like crazy and getting salt. They inherently, instinctually know that they need that salt because they have that CNS override. It's really wild stuff. And again, we're in a chronically sodium deprived state when we are following a low carb diet or when we're fasting. But where things get insanely wild and where the science is starting to get so super crazy cool is its result on the mesolimbic system in the brain. So sodium deprivation or just sodium depletion is showing to have a response within the mesolimbic system, within the brain, within a portion known as the NST, to actually make us crave, of course, salt. But what we're finding is that the lines get crossed. So what happens is this. We have an urge to get salt in our diets. So what happens is we go out and we seek it. And when we have that salt, it satisfies that itch. Okay, it satisfies that dopaminergenic response. We have a dopamine hit that tells our brain, okay, thank goodness he got the salt, we're good to go. Well, where the wires get crossed, 
is the brain seems to respond to sugar and sweet taste just as much, sometimes possibly even more, than it does to salt when this process is occurring. So let me put it into a simple context. You are following a low-carb diet or you're fasting and you're craving salt really bad. So your brain gets a little bit confused and you start craving something sweet. So you go and you have a fat bomb that's sweetened with stevia. Or maybe you go and you have something that's actually sweetened with sugar. And what ends up happening is that sends a signal to your brain that says that you satisfied the salt craving. The lines get crossed. Your sweet satisfaction just solved a salt craving issue without actually physiologically solving it. You just tricked your brain, which now completes a habit loop. So your dopamine just got satisfied. That whole dopamine hit just got satisfied. So you've just created a habit loop off of one or two times to now crave sweet whenever you crave salt. Are you connecting the dots here? You are constantly craving salt when you're on a keto diet. You may not even know it, but it's manifesting through sugar cravings. That's what's really, really interesting. And this is all pretty new emerging stuff. So to back this up, there was a study that was published in the journal Physiology. And this study took a look at 94 single neurons from the NST portion of the brain. Now, granted, this was within rats, but still, we were looking at single neurons, so it's still very applicable. So what they wanted to do is they wanted to see if sodium-depleted rats and sodium-repleted rats, rats that were fine on sodium, had the same kind of effect in terms of a gustatory response to given sweet taste or sugary taste or acid taste. So what they did is they took rats, and they took one group of rats and they had them go on a sodium-free diet for 10 to 13 days. Okay, then nine rats they had as a control where they still consumed their normal sodium. Well, at the end of that period of time, what they did is they gave these rats a given stimuli. They either gave them various versions of sodium chloride, or they gave them acid tastes, or they gave them alkaloids, or they gave them sugar or sweet tastes. Well, what they found was that the rats that were sodium depleted ended up having a 60% response to the sweet taste and a 1% response to the sodium. Okay, whereas vice versa occurred. If the rat was actually fine on sodium, they had a natural response to sodium and a very small response to sugar. So what this showed is that when the rat was deprived of sodium, they had a huge physiological upcharge from the sugar that wouldn't have occurred otherwise. So we become way more sensitive and way more prone to sugar addiction when we're on a ketogenic diet if we're not accurately getting our sodium in. And if you're getting sodium from iodized table salt or from restaurant food or from low quality sources, it's making matters worse because then you're having sodium that doesn't have the other minerals in it. So this makes you bloated. If you've ever gone to a restaurant and you know that you end up feeling all watery and bloated and puffy right afterwards, that's because you just had low quality sodium that is not actually repleting you. Okay, then when you look at a lot of these other salts that are out there, like sea salt for example, it's better than iodized table salt, but sea salt really only has like some iron and some zinc in it and a couple trace minerals. So you're still wildly opposed. Now when it comes down to getting all the minerals that you need, we're talking 60 good solid minerals, I'm a huge fan of Redmond's Real Salt. Okay, these guys are legit, legit, legit. They're based out of Utah and their salt mine is really interesting. Their salt mine literally goes all the way back to the Jurassic period. But what's interesting is that this is a nice even profile of the sodium that you need along with the other minerals that you need to keep it balanced. Not like whittled down portions of those, but the actual perfect physiological amount, not to mention it has sulfur in it, which gives it a nice sweet taste. Like honestly, if you taste, if you were to lay out Redmond Real Salt, Pink Himalayan Salt, Sea Salt, and Iodized Salt and taste the difference, it's undeniable how much better the Redmond Real Salt tastes. So what I usually do is add salt to my water, specifically when I'm traveling. Now I wanna to touch on pink Himalayan salt for a second, okay? I'm not anti-pink Himalayan salt. You guys have seen my videos, like I tout it quite a bit. The reason is, is up until I discovered Redmond Real Salt, it really was the next best thing. Here's what's kind of my beef with pink Himalayan salt right now. They claim 84 minerals. Well, there's really only 60. Okay, the other 24 minerals are not detectable. You see, the FDA will allow them to say that those minerals exist as long as they show up as 0 0.0001, which technically, by scientific standards, is considered non-detectable. 
So non-detectable minerals are allowed to be put on a label or allowed to be marketed as existing when reality is they don't even exist. That's not to say that pink Himalayan salt is totally bad. The fact is, for a cheaper price and a better flavor, you can get salt that actually has the full wide abundant profile of minerals that you need. So these guys are awesome. So they're a huge sponsor of this channel now. They've done some amazing things. I'm gonna visit with them out in Utah here when I go out there. But the fact is, when you're looking at iodized salt, and you're looking at Himalayan salt, and you're looking at Celtic sea salt, and you're looking at regular sea salt, there is a clear winner. But the fact of the matter is, regardless, we need to be getting our salt in. So the guys at Redmond have made it possible by offering a special discount for those of you that are watching this video. So down in the description, there is a link to get a special discounted package that I put together with Redmond. So it's not like they're just offering a discount. I assembled a package of my favorite salts and my favorite seasonings with them so that if you are fasting or you're doing keto, you can utilize those. So you're not gonna see this discount anywhere else down in the description below. And you can consume their salt while you're fasting and it makes your life a lot easier so you're not gonna have those cravings. So I wanna to touch on one more thing with the Celtic sea salt because a lot of people have asked the difference between sea salt and Celtic sea salt. Celtic sea salt is a little bit more modern. Okay, so it's supposed to be the newer salt. The problem with that is you have a lot of contaminants. Okay, Celtic sea salt has a lot of radiation contaminants and other heavy metals that can flow into it. So you gotta be really, really careful with that. So the simple fact of the matter is, is that whether you like it or not, you're sodium deficient. Okay, you're going to be depleted in sodium. You might not be the second that you consume it, but an hour later, you're gonna be urinating it out. You ever notice that you pee a lot while you're on the keto diet or while you're fasting? It's simply because of that. So you have to get the wide abundant profile of minerals that you need so that you don't have that consistent craving all the time. And you definitely wanna be taking advantage of the special pricing on the Redmond Real Salt and get a nice high quality salt that's down in the description. So a huge thank you again and thank you to you guys for not only supporting my channel, but supporting some great guys at a great company. And as always, keep it salty, my friends. I'll see you in the next video.